Welcome back YouTubers to my channel of an everyday life of an SB. If you're new to my channel, I welcome you all. I'm SB. I'm all about creating mental health and awareness and sharing my life stories. So today this one's going to be a quick tag video of a like get to know me more based on an accent tag or where I come from tag. So if you're into any of these of what I have shared of like with be it mental health advocacy work versus collabing versus some fun and games and everything else in between this feel free to subscribe on the bottom right hand corner of the screen and if you do just decide to join me on the bandwagon today feel free to turn on the notification bell for future updates of these videos that I'm hoping to address to you all. So this one's obviously as I mentioned is going to be all about me based on where I'm from obviously of a tag and this one was obviously thought of from Lulu from Lulu Beaverful that I will link in her description as well as above here so that you can just get to know her more as a person. So I'm for the do guys basically. Also I want to thank you for actually allowing me to take the time to do this. So let's begin this. Anybody be wondering where I'm from? I'm from down under by a little country called New Zealand or Aotearoa as I call it in Māori since we're a multicultural country that is based in Europeans, us Europeans versus Māori with different iwis and tribes. Oh, you wondering foods that represent New Zealand? No, while you're travelling in that, you can't beat some of the New Zealand kai or food as we call it in Māori. I humbly apologise if I'm going to be speaking Māori. I'll hopefully clarify what every word means when you hear me saying this. So bear with me. So as we know, basically New Zealand is well known for their culinary desires delights of food versus also accommodation and tourist attractions by doing everyday activities of leisure and fun be it like as I said before I've been at the thermal hot pools up north basically near Hooker Falls there as well as in saying this also you can't beat the first well as some of the drinks but moving on for, aside from that even though as we know there are certainly some meals, drinks, snacks, desserts that we Kiwis are proud to claim of our own. As a country around with 14,000 kilometres of shoreline or the coastline, it comes as no surprise that seafood is one of the specialities that is most favourite among most of us Kiwis with the wealth of shellfish and fish. For the Māori culture, or shall I say thousands of years. So it's a traditional Māori dish with its hangi, fried bread or kawakawa tea. But as I said, there's a few more I want to list here today. So, number one is the traditional Māori hangi by the New Zealand Māori culture. This involves underground heating as well as in saying this with this underground heating, it involves certain meats, veggies, salads that are slow cooked underground, like a little underground oven. But now and again, here's say most of the time hungies are usually safe for special occasions, be it birthdays, weddings, because obviously it takes all day to prepare, so you have to start early. So as I said before, of the seafood category is the crayfish. Crayfish is also known as lobster, is again a kiwi favourite, mostly because it has so so many other fishermen wanting and divers catching them on them all by themselves. Then you'll understand why New Zealand Kiwis of us go cray cray over cray. -cray. Number three on the list is basically the hokey pokey ice cream. Obviously, some Kiwis prefer hokey pokey ice cream, some may prefer vanilla. But obviously, there is was a tip top factory. I don't know if they're still open, sort of thing that does produce different types of ice creams. That is New Zealand. Canna, another seafood delicacy for some New Zealand Kiwis. Which, hello, not for me, obviously. But this one's obviously another, like I said, the from the ocean. Obviously, it's a formerly known sea urchin, which obviously the have a hard, spiky outer shell. Like imagine it like a hedgehog, he say, and the flesh is thin and edible with their insides. It's the best place to travel is the Bay of Islands. It's here, Kiwi Island. Burger. You may think it's a it's weird or a genius idea at the time of what makes us the kiwi burger. You know, it has beetroot and fried egg, obviously, alongside with your standard burger patties and whatever else between those burger buns that you like. Don't knock it into six is your Jaffas, obviously. Jaffas are like a hard-coated candy sweets, basically, that has an orange, 
the light red kind of colour and inside it is lint milk chocolate and basically the small balls obviously it has been known for once a year in Dunedin they have a Jaffa race basically where the candy is rolled down the steepest hill or residential street known as Baldwin Street otherwise you can pick up these in the and the local supermarkets here in New Zealand or dairies is pavlova. Many people claim for the pavlova to be Aussie based, but I believe it is New Zealand based, even though it has been debated. But then you can ask the Aussies about it versus the Kiwi, and obviously they will tell you different. Either way, pavlova is the much loved dessert in New Zealand, made with meringue, whipped cream, and fruit. Sometimes for us Kiwis, we usually have the pavlova over Christmas period. Shall we say, even though white bait fritters are now becoming extinct in New Zealand, even though they are locally found in the west coast of the South Island, and it's considered to be obviously a collective term for immature fish, like little, like you could tadpoles or wood. Manukia honey is next on the list. I highly sought after honey on the international markets. Manukia honey obviously as we know is a claim for its medicinal properties. The more pure the Manukia component of the honey is, the healthy and more expensive it is as I've noticed here in New Zealand. There are plenty of opportunities to try the sweet treat around New Zealand from supermarkets to some dedicated honey shops or there are some hive people do hives with beekeeping and whatnot. Do I know any native languages or just languages in general? I know only a little bit of Māori, French, Italian, Spanish and a bit of sign language dialects, be it New Zealand sign language versus American sign what language. What piece of clothing represents New Zealand? This is a hugely debate one, obviously. As I said, New Zealand is a multicultural country, obviously. As I know, clothing is the most important statement or immediate way of communication to to others. New Zealand doesn't have a specific New Zealand national dress, however, yet the Maldives, they do. And it's the kahu, which is the cloaks, and what it means in Māori to English. These are worn basically traditionally by the Maldives based, based on giving them significant mana, which in English it means power and authority and honour to official occasions. Some will be royal events or royal tours versus your state funerals versus I've seen some people in the multicultural wearing it at weddings and graduations when they're graduating. Uh, in the 19th century, subtle details mark out New Zealand your parents travelling overseas obviously. That included a piece of punamu, which is a green stone that is officially a Māori kind of necklace that is used to be worn around a man's wristwatch chain. But traditionally now in the 21st century, you are wearing it around your neck. And with the punamu of the green stone, you can get different designs, shapes and what have you. And in saying this, with the different you know shapes and that, some of them comes in different sizes as well. And... It's significant different meanings of different designs that will come up, be it the kuru designs versus basically the na the natives of basically what I've seen of the kiwi versus your dolph green dolphin versus what have you, which my sister's got one somewhere. Also, I'm saying this too, however, there has been some other Māori jewellery like the white bone kind of carved out here, say, from a while that, again, the Māori's use and... They have used it for many centuries. They carved it out into some jewellery pieces versus some hair pieces when they used to wear it in wars. Māori designs has had an impact on the Europeans for a while in the European days of New Zealand. A special, a special motive, you know, basically design of a spir spiral kuru design, which obviously represents new life. And sometimes with those kuru designs, on the New Zealand clothing pieces, basically, or even on some labels, you can see play. what song represents our country. Obviously, the song that represents our country is two things. You've got the national anthem of God of Nations, 
versus basically the Maldives when they do their little war dance you, you may see you know in certain sporting events which is the haka haka represents war dance obviously what it means in Maldives just what it right. raises what number I six is my favorite place in my country of New Zealand like some of the places I've been to would be anything that represents you know mountains and climbing which would be obviously near Mount Rupaihu versus Ngarahui and all those native bush books up there that I used to do when I was a little girl hearsay so it will be around that region. Name three things you love about your country. Obviously these three things is the New Zealand nature obviously you know enjoying going out the forestry and just when you're hiking and what like you'll hear New Zealand native birds blaring sometimes you might hear it sometimes out on the city streets here say if you're lucky enough of the toys or some other New Zealand native bird but not all because most of the New Zealand native birds now are becoming extinct unfortunately another one is based on what I love about my country is like as I said before just some of the tourist attractions you can do for sporting you know if you're wanting to do sports and everyday active stuff this is place to be obviously and the third one would be basically just maybe some some food obviously not all name three things that I hate about the country I can't think of anything it rolls into the next question what the weather is known for in our country for seasons with mine sometimes sad but true depending where you are what drinks is represent our country well obviously there are a few again on that one is your LMP, which is obviously thought to be an alcoholic beverage. But lemon and port oil is the, a very own claimed soft drink here in New Zealand. And there is a factory that produces it, basically. Even though Coca-Cola is the manufacturer, like most things that Coca-Cola manufacture. And obviously you can find this icon of LMP is in Paitoa. Hence, you know, LMP, lemon and port oil. Marlborough Savon Blanc wines obviously is found in the Marlborough, Marlborough area which is the sunniest and driest part of New Zealand that is bound to please the taste buds for you guys if you're into you know white wines. Sauvignon Blanc is mostly vastly produced and famous obviously for this. Three is your apple cider. It has been some parts in New Zealand that produces apple cider. The New Zealand craft beers there's a huge craft beer culture in New Zealand and there are some factory still readily available that you can most likely from memory still talk. Um, more than 160 breweries across the country and you may think New Zealand is enough a whole country. There are brewery tours, like even though the most common ones I can think of of New Zealand is DB Draft, Tui, Lion Red and more something you'll be finding in Nelson. Another one is the coffee. Obviously, obviously us Kiwis or New Zealand Kiwis are obsessed with coffee, obviously. If it isn't barrister made with frothy milk, however, then that's not worth talking about, however. But most cafes in New Zealand have quality, high quality barristers made coffee with highly trained barristers. And sometimes when you see some latte art around on top of your frothy milk, it's what well known for. Mel cider obviously is a winter warmer which is a form of cider as we know because obviously it's made with certain spices such as your cinnamon and nutmeg. It's particularly popular in Queenstown over the winter season months and the list goes on which I'll list link below. What slang words are used in our country? There's quite a few which I'll list hopefully somewhere also based on the New Zealand slang that I use. You've got bro, cuz, blimmin, stubbies, and you may be wondering what stubbies are. Obviously, they are male short shorts that was in fashion a few years back when it was introduced. What other words used to describe ugly, great, dirty, pretty, bad, and gross in New Zealand? Obviously, sometimes in saying this, I don't know the multi terms for it but they'll use those or another one is basically it's just as is to me what do I call juice well it depends basically if it's cordial versus 
with the sachets or just the you know fruit juice that you need to dilute down with water or with juice it depends on if it's a fruit juice of some kind that apple and orange mango juice or what have you what's equal to change channels with a TV remote control what do you call your grandparents? If my grandparents were still around, it would be Nana or Grandma or Papa and or Grandpop or Grandpa, depending really. Because obviously, each of my grandparents had different formalities of how to address it. So this quickly ends a real short overview, hopefully, of the Accent 10 getting to know me more based on where I'm from of New Zealand. If you like this, smash the like. Feel free to comment below. Feel free to let me know also if you want to do this tag for anybody because I'm going to just let you guys invite you all in if you want to do it just to get to know you more. And if you do do it and you have a channel, please let me know by in the comments section below so that we can actually, you know, engage in conversation. So in all for the do guys also in saying this, don't forget to also if you want to get hold of me and you're interested in actually what you've seen about me collabing with people based on their conditions as my future projects that's going to be an ongoing thing, let me know either via PMing me through SB Answers or even on this video or one of those collab videos so that I can actually get hold of you to let you know what I want from you. In saying this also, don't forget also for anyone of you who are interested in supporting me in any way I can at this point of time to continue future projects like what I'm doing, let me know by donating below with the crowdfunding page of Patreon because obviously at this point of time it's up and running and in saying this that you'll get to know me more as a creator versus hopefully giving back to you guys. And some parts soon which I'm hoping as I said I'm gonna hopefully give you guys an update what I've been up to so far also so that you can still hopefully let me know what your daily is so don't forget to also share these videos right now.